Hello everyone, welcome back to the anatomy lab. This is going to be the cell part two, where we just look at the cell organelles one more time. If you need help orient yourself, orienting yourself to the organelles, I suggest going back to that video. But I'm just going to quickly go over this and, and, and at the very least help maybe figure out which one's which, as well as help to give you some determining factors on how to look for these organelles again. So once again, plasma membrane on the outside. Notice that this cell is completely round. There are no kind of extensions. There's no villi, cilia, or flagella. So this is just plasma membrane on the outside, but like we did last time, let's go look for the nucleus. So the nucleus is usually in the middle of the cell and it's no different in here. Here is the nucleus where we can once again find the nuclear envelope. So the membrane surrounding the nucleus, the nuclear envelope. Furthermore, the nuclear envelope has these little holes. The nuclear envelope will have the nuclear pores through which things can go in and out of the nucleus. But inside of the nucleus, what do we see? We have the nucleolus, the orange sphere in the middle, as well as the chromatin. So in this case, it's a little bit more clear like where you find genetic material or chromatin versus nucleolus, the kind of condensed well, condensed in this case, but often tangled up DNA and chromatin. This is the nucleus in the middle, and then the chromatin in this case is going to be shown kind of scattered throughout the nucleus outside as these little squiggly lines, or rather kind of spirally lines. Now going to kind of like the more difficult part, let's take a look at the rest of the organelles now. So in this case, you can see that it is different from the other model. In this case, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is still surrounding it, but it is going to be much more expansive. You can see that the rough endoplasmic reticulum is connected to the nucleus. You can see that it is adjacent surrounding the nucleus. But you can see that this rough endoplasmic reticulum, like the last time, had these rough, bu rough bumps, but it is going to go farther out to throughout the rest of the cell. This is just how the cell is represented, but it also could be due to like this type of cell as well. So a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum, you can see the white balls and you can see further like the white balls traveling further around as well. And keep in mind that if you find these white balls, at least in this distinct, in this distinct manner, you can also identify these white balls as the things that are surrounding it. So the names of those are ribosomes which are going to be helping to produce proteins so that the rough endoplasmic reticulum can then process them. So each of these white balls is a ribosome, and then the whole thing that's all throughout, like this kind of long thing surrounding the nucleus and going outward, that's the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, given that you have a rough endoplasmic reticulum, if you can find a spot that doesn't have all of those little bumps, like this region over here, this would be smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum will not have that, and it'll function differently as well in synthesizing lipids, detoxifying the body, and so on. Now, for the Golgi apparatus, try to look for it really quickly before I point it out. Can you find the pancakes? Can you find the vesicles? So, in this case, I would look for the pancakes first, but confirm with the vesicles. So this, although, look, although it looks different from the other model, this is the Golgi apparatus with the stack of pancakes and then surrounding it, coming off of it, those are the vesicles. So if I can look for those together, I'm much more confident in identifying it than if it were to just be by itself. Otherwise, maybe this is the Golgi apparatus, but I mean, there are other things that help me to determine that's not the case, but yeah. You want to have as many ways to find these structures as you can so that you're confident when you're taking the quiz or the practicum. Now moving on though, this looks a little bit different from last time as well, but you can see that there's a thick kind of double membrane here. This is the mitochondria. So the mitochondrion is going to have these little curves in the middle. This is indicating and representing that double membrane as well as like all of the folds inside. So this is a mitochondrion and this is a mitochondrion. Now in this case, the lysosome, once again, is kind of the most non-discrete 
organelle. So if this is the mitochondrion, you know that that's not the lysosome. You know that these are not the lysosomes. You know that this is not the lysosome. It's actually these yellow ones. So if you have no distinct factors or characteristics to identify it, if you can eliminate everything else, then you should be pretty confident in saying lysosome. I won't throw any mysteries in there, so as long as you can't find the other organelles, you should be relatively good to go. Now, I think the last one that we have is the centrioles again. So here we have the centrioles. Although it's not quite as churro-like, you can definitely see that it is in a pair. There are these tubes going through it. They are going to be relatively short, and they are kind of cylindrical and rod-like. So this is the centriole, which I remember as the mini churros. So once again, that is the cell, but as you can see, it looks different from each model. Make sure that you're studying each of the model pictures and finding all of the structures from your structure list in order for you to be able to identify all of these different things from any of the given models. So all of those practicum pictures, those quiz pictures, they could be from, they could be on the test and you don't know which one I'm going to use. So make sure that you're familiar with all of them or at the very least, have some sort of strategy or have some sort of mm, way of figuring out which structure is which and differentiating structure from structure as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your studying, and I'll see you all next time.